Hello and welcome back to the Wildlands and our permaculture food forest from day one. This is episode two, days one to three, where we shape the swales. We show you how we fill and line them. Dom explains what a swale is and how it works in case you haven't seen our other videos. And we show you what trees and plants we have to be getting on with as we start to plant up on the backs of the berms. So enjoy tonight's episode. there Missy? Lots of plants. I got, uh, what have we got? We've got some hardy kiwis, some tay berries, cherry tree, some Egyptian walking onions. And some of those are gifts from people that have followed us on Buy Me A Coffee aren't they? They are yes, the kiwis and the cherries. So yeah the kiwis came from John, thank you very much John. And the walking onions are from Gary, yep. who's given us stuff before. Very very big thanks Gary for all the wonderful plants you've given us. Oh and a teeny tiny, um, I forgot this guy, this is a, this is a tree, it's a strawberry tree. <laughs> a tree lip. So this is a orange tree that we've had in a pot since last year and we didn't want to plant it last year because we bought it in early summer when it's too late to plant trees out. So you're better off planting trees in the dormant season which is usually November-ish and all the way through till January maybe even February but the later you leave it the less they've got a chance to establish their roots before their new growing season. So this orange we're going to put actually where, where you see it now and we're going to make a nice border here of wild flowers so that when we're sitting on Bogie's bench we've got a lovely view of flowers and Missy's back with even more trees, more trees Missy! So this is where we are on day one lunchtime and you can see from the previous footage that Dave has been in on his digger and he's dug us four swales of varying lengths and these are positioned quite strangely due to the layout of our land as this is like a little micro valley because we have a hill on our left, a hill or boulders on our right and the terrace behind me where the polytunnel and cold frame is is also sloping this way so that means that any rain that falls runs off and was currently running down the land which was becoming quite desertified in the summer due to no water being able to soak into the ground. So the idea is is that the swales will catch all the rainfall that that happens in a few epic events during the winter months and also because we have these trenches or swales which is the actual dip part of the uh, of the construction we can also pump water from our well in the months where we have plenty of water in the well but not enough rain falling and that over time will create a plume so basically if you imagine it here the rain catches in the swale or we fill it up with water from the well and then that slowly soaks into the ground and you get what's called a plume, which basically means that underneath this swale and berm, the berm being the lumpy bit, there will be a collection of extra water underground and that grows every year. And after about five to seven years, it reaches its maximum potential. And then the idea is, as you have deep rooted plants, a lot of trees, things like strawberries and comfrey and so on, that are also bringing that water up and uh, you have to water less is the plan and this is a tried and proven technique grown in many drought countries from Egypt to Morocco and permaculture is now very popular across most of Europe particularly in parts of Portugal where there's lots of people like us living off grid and you can see Missy in the distance who's shaping the swale and berm there and also putting in a path so that we can get out uh, because we'll be using the swale the dip part as our pathways. So here where you see here we've got to make some construction here so that you can get down easily with a wheelbarrow and then we're going to fill that up with hay and wood chip uh, to 
to level it off and make it a nice obvious path and the water will still collect through that and over time that will rot down. So you can see we've finished our demo swale as I'm calling it. So we've got the hay down, you saw me put down, got wood chip a couple of inches on top which has raised it significantly. This will rot down over time and add more nutrients into the whole planting affair so that's quite exciting and it's made a nice surface to walk on it's quite soft so what we've got now is um, we're going to plant the berms and the downside of the berms because these are what's termed as fluffy so apart from this edge which I tapped down yesterday because it was starting to collapse and that's the whole point of planting them up quickly so we're going to put strawberries in which are great along with comfrey and a few other plants that have deep roots and that'll hold the berm together and stop all this fluffy soil land sliding off in the next rain event in a couple of weeks and then we've decided here we're going to put some shrubs in and some berries as opposed to a a tree or two because behind me over here I mentioned earlier we're going to put a large orange tree and create a little fancy area with a tree in the middle and a round border and lots of wild flowers in front of Bogie's bench so let's get planting and we can show you the whole logic so this is the large orange tree that's going to go in the middle of this sort of rectangular bed I'm going to make a circular bed I think around it with wood chip around the outside and then where Missy's kneeling we're going to put wild flowers there so what have we got here Missy to go in we have a red currant this is a guava is it yeah, a feijoa a and then this is a big bundle of strawberries about 20 or 30 in there and a tabery and those of you that not heard of tabries they're like a very long giant raspberry thing which is very nice so tabery just the one tabery over this side I think so. Yeah. That leaves room for uh, comfrey and rhubarb plants, which are quite big in between. We haven't grown them yet. Okay. And do you want them in that order? Do you know what shape the guava takes? Does it stay sort of bushy or does it get height? Uh, I think we might need to look that up. Okay. Let's go <laughs> on to Google and check out this guava and see what she does. All right. So the guava feijoa, it's not actually a true guava and it grows up to 20 foot. It can be a tree or can be cut and kept as a big shrub. So it's too big to go here right on the edge of the path and with this orange tree behind it which is also going to get big so we're going to take this over that side right to the end of the swale and the berm where there is no problem with its height so let's pop that over there for later so miss is suggesting a giant thyme here so it's not a big plant in terms of height but that'll attract lots of pollinators and it'll creep over the over the berm and obviously we're going to plant strawberries and loads of other stuff and we're also going to seed uh, clovers and, and wild flowers and chop and drop flowers all over the, this as well to try and hold it together so it's going to look epic. Strawberries that I used to see in the UK which were usually sold as plugs or in little pots or anything up to $1.99 for a small one or even up to two or three ninety nine for a big one and here which I've told you about before but they excite me and Rosie you might remember planted these last year so you buy them in a bundle they're three euro sixty nine so we're talking three quid and you get around 20 25 even 30 strawberries dry rooted and they don't look very exciting like this just with their dry roots but last year we had such a success with them. They all flowered, all grew strawberries, got very big very quickly. So we're gonna plant some of these. I don't know how many, I'll check with the boss. And then on the other side, we've got the almond that you'll remember from the previous video that we got our bumper crop of three almonds, one each. Off. No disparaging my almond. So that's not been moved, which is good because it's really well established. And then here we have another red currant, same as the one on the other side. Another tabery, same as the one on the other side. And what have you got here? Is that parsley? Parsley that we moved from behind us. Yeah, yeah, it grew. Uh, I mean, this is incredible. This started as a seedling last uh, January, February time, and it's just grown all the way through the winter through all the frosts. And oh, I quite often just yank bits out that's and eat nice, them as I go it? around the garden. Fabulous. Oh, look at my poor root-bound guava. 
he's going to be pleased to be in the ground. Yeah. And this guy's getting all the lovely topsoil that was in the previous bed. That's the first sort of part of the swale finish. We've got the flooring, we've got trees, shrubs planted, a few strawberries, and it's obviously quite early in the season, not even in February yet. So we've, you know, it's a bit early to be getting a lot of seeds in. So we've got, we're going to put some seeds in, some ground cover seeds, and then if they don't make it through the frosts, so be it. We can just sow some more. But the idea is, is hopefully we'll get some roots. So we've got some mixed wild flowers and ground cover and some comfrey that's going to go over there that we're going to get off Gary so that's exciting as well. So we're going to sow a few seeds next, put the topsoil on which is going to be a sprinkling of our golden compost that we've made over the last year just over the top and then that's kind of it until the spring gets fully going and then we can get sunflowers and all kinds of other goodies in as well. So good work Missy. by plants, my favourite thing. We have bought lots and lots of um, currant bushes and berry bushes and so on. They're going to go on the tops of the berms to stick their roots in and hold it all together. We've got some trees, got some cherry trees behind me, got some um, chestnut trees and walnut tree, all sorts of different trees. Um, and a lot of those come from Buy Me A Coffee. So if you've bought us a tree or a bush or something, thanks very much. You're going to get to see it go in the ground now. So we're on day three swales and berms so as you started to see earlier this is swale number one here berm number one which we completed a couple of days ago and now we're going to complete and fill up swale number two so first off we're going to fill it with straw as we have done before and then we're going to top that off with wood chip That's almost it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching our swales come together. It feels so good to have gotten all that work done. In next week's episode, we get to work on what we're calling the hoop house. Last year, we didn't have enough space or height to grow beans and peas. So this year we're getting super prepared with an ingenious mix of a polytunnel frame, some rebar and some netting. I can't wait to show you the construction and how it takes shape. But before we go, Dom's very excited to tell you about his All Powers S700 portable power station and foldable solar panel. In fact, he's using it to edit this video. Here he is to tell you all about it. So yet yeah, another off-grid chore is when it's sunny, we have to get all our boxes out and on charge. And we also have to move our shade house solar panels around as the sun swings round so that we get the maximum solar input while we're in the middle of winter but as you can see it's a glorious sunny day today it's due to be sunny most of the week it's also an exciting day today because i've got a new box for doing my youtube editing which is a fairly new brand but they're very well priced and very high spec so we've got the all powers 700 and it's matching 
rather snazzy looking panel so i'm going to put that on charge and uh, you can have a look around it it's a very nice looking box so very snazzy panel comes with the all powers 700 if you order the panel and if i flip it around you can see there's a uh, a zip up bag where all your cabling can go because this panel will work on other boxes as well and then it's got two of these stands which obviously flip out and then the panel can stand up giving you enough shade behind to put the box in so that's the box itself the all powers 700 and as you can see it's quite a small box so it does pack a mean bit of power for the size of the box. It's new technology, and this kind of technology is improving all the time. So the boxes are getting smaller, such as this is much smaller than our other boxes, and packing a mean punch. And it's quite an interesting design as well. And it's got multiple ways of charging, and also uh, it has an app, so you can connect to the app. So I'll put the specs up for you, rather than waffle them all out to you, but it does have a lot of inputs and outputs, so it's very cool. And then this one is a European, and it's got two European inputs, but if you're ordering in the UK, there is a UK link and a European link in the description, so you can get whichever plug inputs you require. So very cool. Thanks very much for watching, thanks for all of your comments, and we'll see you again soon. Bye.